Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Welcome to Unrehearsed Spontaneous and Informal Program. As always, no teleprompters, no cue cards, no idiot boards, no reruns. Just plain ad-lib conversation in which we try and tell it like it really is. This is Vincent from VNA. Okay, I'm here broadcasting from our Ottawa studio. Okay, I'm going to talk to you today and show you some stuff, teach you some stuff about, you know, what you need to know in Canada. That's our job. We're in the media. You know, we don't fart around. You know, I'm an old fart. I'm a boomer. But I've been around a long time. I learned a lot of stuff in my life. But I was talking to somebody last night who say we got to be more focused. This is the reason I'm doing this this morning. You know, so it's going to be a little bit different than our regular stuff. What I'm going to do is play you an excerpt. It's going to be an educational excerpt. And then we're going to teach you why we do what we do, who we are. You know, talk about that some, you know, because we've neglected to do that. So we're going to focus in, you know, because we got a lot of followers, you know. Not a lot, but we got... You know, mostly our group members, and then we we've been talking to a lot of people. They've been coming and watching us, and we've been getting pretty popular up here. But we're going to tell you what we do, who we are, and why we do what we do. And the best way to do that is to get you a feel for us and to learn. We're going to play some excerpts out of things we've done. We're going to play some stuff out of you know from the great Charlie Duff, one of our mentor, one of our mentors. Who will, we watch what he does and try and learn from what he does so that we're going to play what he does. He's going to really give you an education. And then we're going to, you know, talk about my godfather, Lou, how I learned and everything in my history. So you get a little bit of focus on what DNA is all about. Okay, now in order to do that, I'm going to switch the camera to this camera right here. Okay, this way you, I got a little bit of focus and everything. And we're going to continue. Let's start with the excerpt. You, you know, then I'm going to play a little bit of Charlie's stuff, his basic thing to tell you what he does. And that's basically what we do here in Ottawa. He does it in Detroit. We're doing this in Ottawa. You know, we're trying to model ourselves after what my godfather did, Lou. You know, and just give you ad lib conversation. There's no Secret Service shit in my ear. You know, there's no idiot boards. There's no teleprompters I, this is just straight up conversation i'm talking to you because you're the people we serve we're the media the people forget all these things that we're here to help you you know they think it's all about oh i'm a journalist you know they slave themselves as journalists self-glorify themselves and they don't write a damn thing but a twitter tweet you know and some of them are journalists you know they you know twitter tweets don't get me wrong it's you know like quasi journalism you know you're you're writing but it's it's not journalism you know they're a YouTube creator, they're a Twitter motor mouth, or they're a uh, broadcast commentator. So if they do that, be proud of what you are and just, you know, leave it at that. You know, I'm just going to say that. I don't, I don't really believe in all this. Oh, I'm a journalist shit. You know, oh, look, I'm coming up out of the basement, or I'm here next to Tamara Lich, or I'm here with this so-and-so VIP. You know, far, hell with all that bullshit. Just do your job, do what you're going to do, and do it well. Anyways, I'm going to get on with this by playing some excerpts, and then I'm going to get in and let you see what Charlie, you know, what Charlie says about, you know, what he does. So, you know, what we're trying to do here in Ottawa, and then you're going to see some of the things that we done. And you're going to see, I talked to, in some of these later clips I'm going to show you, we're talking to, you know, just regular people, some people that some people would think was idiots looking at them, or lowlifes or something. You're going to see, these are people, man, and this is what... It's all about, you know, they're out there trying to help you. This is what it's all about. So we try and uh, show you what it is. Andy Lee does that. Andy Lee gets into all the, she's a very good investigative reporter. You know, she's an associate, independent. You know, our members are independent. They do their own thing, but they belong to the media group. You know, it's like that. Andy Lee's independent. She doesn't work for us. We don't pay her. She does it on her own time, her own dime. And her, her own willpower, you know, and she's awesome. You guys, she's got 56,000 followers, you know. She didn't have that many, many at first. When, when we started dealing with her, she had a, quite a few, a few thousand. But it wasn't like she is today. You know, she's one of the most popular people out there in Canada. And that's our girl. We support her, you know, anything that we can do for her, we do. You know, that's the way we are to all our members, you know, or all our people that help us. We give, you know, I just give a car away to somebody. I don't know if you guys saw it you know, that cast or anything, because we didn't put it up, because we're not trying to promote what we're doing or anything, we just do it, you know, this is the way it is, and we just do what we do for you, you know, 
So, you know, and I'm going to stand up and, and help you guys, you know, understand what's going on. That's our main purpose, to educate you, to open up on the things that a lot of people ain't showing you. And our buddy over there in Detroit, he's going to really show you something in a little bit. All the facts and figures ain't, aren't completely in line yet, but he's that's the way that he's teaching us how to work like that, too. Anyways, let me get on with this. Uh, let me get on with this cast. You can see some of what we do. And... And I'm up early because I just got up early before these workmen started making noise and I couldn't do this cast. So without any further ado, let's get into let's get into you can see what we do and I'm gonna educate you a little bit in this excerpt from this interview I had with, with Rohan from a war campaign or he was interviewing you me actually. I do better when there's somebody in front and I can talk to them than just talking straight up to you guys. You know, and I can't write for shit, that's why I don't do anything. Andy Lee can write column. She can investigate me. I'm not into that. You know, I just come right out of my brain ad lib. Like Lou says in our intro there, this is no idiot boards. There's no secret server shit in my ear. Nobody, I'm not wearing headphones where people can say there's no teleprompter. I just talk to you and try and tell you what to do. That's why you should listen to this whole part that's been a lot since I now. I've done it. I've been it all. I've seen it all, which I'm going to explain to you a little bit more. But let's get off into this excerpt so we can start this out and I don't get too long in the intro here. All right, thanks. No, no, Vinny's a man, trust me. This... Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay, now Good everything's to go, better brother. now. Now yeah, we can man. go. I figured out what the problem was. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> oh, this new tech, unless I got the college kid here, this one that I got working, the you know, the main cameras and the damn main cameras didn't turn on, buddy. Yeah, no, 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 this no problem. Camp man. sucks, but at least you can see me. No, you look good. You look good, brother. You're looking really yeah, good. Yeah, you man. know, I feel so sorry for these Canadians. You know, their ancestors really screwed up back in 1776 and 1789. They're stuck with this crown, you know, divine right crap. That's why you have Article One, Section One, and these poor people don't even know how they've been, you know, screwed up the butt. You just look at Article 1, Section 1, it tells you who's got your rights in Canada, you know, in the charter there. We don't have unalienable rights to given to us directly by God here in Canada. The Crown doles out our rights, and that's one of the main problems with Canada, that and we don't elect our officials. You know, I'm Canadian, too. I mean, I'm both of U.S. and Canadian, like Andrew Shear. I thought you knew that, buddy. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, that that's a really interesting point, okay? And this is why we got Vinny here, because Vinny uh, was actually trained as a lawyer, spent his life... I went to University of Michigan, American Law, Mears, Canadian Oh, nice. Law, you know? Okay, and then he he trained as a lawyer. Then he practiced as a journalist. He is in, he's being official. Not journalist, man. I'm a I'm a damn reporter. Hell with those, you know, self labeling journalists. Oh, look at me, you know, I, I'm a journalist. You know, I'm better than you. But got to be proud of what you do. You're a broadcast re commentator and a reporter yourself, bro. You're out there with the people. You know, you don't care about the VIPs. You know, just like me, you're tired of looking at the SOBs. You only go to ask them a question when it applies to the to the people who you work for. We work for the people, buddy. We're not friggin' oh journalists, you know. Oh look at me, I'm in the basement. I'm coming up now, you know. <laughs> Sometimes these journalists really get me these kids. Oh I'm a journalist, you know, 17 years old. Oh I'm a damn journalist. <laughs> You know, but look who I'm with. You know, look at me. I'm with Tamara Litcher. I'm with so and so and so and so. The story's about you. About about the. It's about the story in the W fours. You know, the house whose hands and wise is not about your personal glory, dude. You, you follow me, bro? Yeah, man. I follow. You see why we got Vinny? He's, Vinny's the man. man. He's, he's not. Man. You got to quit saying he's a journalist, bro. He's a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You see what journalists I'm saying? Drink with, journalists drink with the politicians. Reporters drink with the people. You know, they're out there in the, the mud and the blood and the guts and the beer, helping them build the bridges, carrying the dead bodies out of the nursing homes. You know, you guys got to check out my homeboy in Detroit, Charlie Adolph. That guy's been doing it as well. I used to work. You know, my mother used to work with Lou Gordon over there, all Fox News, WKBD, but it, it wasn't even Fox News and and whatnot. But I stayed on, you know, helping after after Lou died and it became Fox News, you know, in Detroit. I was there in the riots with my mother. This shit that happened in Ottawa, buddy, that it was like a big party. You know, when you got a patent main battle tank blowing a building down because there's some sniper up there. You know, that's violence, buddy. These people don't have a coup, you know. You know, I was in Ferguson when Faith was there, you know, and all that Nazi stuff, well, how she got in trouble there, you know, and that was violence, you know, the the 
Rodney King stuff of I was when the planes hit the tower, Charlie and I were there, you know, in on 9-11, that was violence. You ever see a urinal melted, buddy, or a doorknob melted, or some guy jumping off from, you know, 80 stories up? You know, there's right, these people are, you know, these downtown residents of Ottawa and the politicians are wusses, buddy, you know? Yeah, right? yeah, they are, man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, Pan is from Oregon, huh? Yeah, and they've got some huge ass, they got some huge rattlesnakes up there. I keep sending them, you know, like messages in the chat, show row them rattlesnake. They're lying all over the road. I've been to Oregon plenty of times, full lefties. Didn't used to be, but now it is. But you got some good people yeah. there, loggers. You know, people like if you were, when I was in the Navy, I was hitchhiking through there, you know, go, going back to, to the Midwest there. And people would take me up, let me spend the night in their house and stuff, Eugene, Oregon, and stuff like that. You know, I just don't like all them bridges around Portland, buddy. I drove through there, too. <laughs> right? There's a lot of bridges in Portland. And, yeah, I yeah, haven't Yeah, but it's beautiful, Portland, all those bro. little rock islands off the coast there. The only thing I don't like is the friggin' rattlesnakes, man. Right. And, and, you know, the cities, unfortunately, now are just leftists. That's the main thing that I don't like. It's like I can't even go to Portland anymore. Yeah, I got a kick out of when the leftists attacked that bike club up there in the bike club, you know. Oh, yeah, a, I saw a that. surprise from them, remember? Bikers gave them a little bit of a, a welcome. Yeah, that was good. I remember that. A few know, one, they, one question, Vinny. Like Back in the day, it wasn't full of leftists in, in Oregon? No, it wasn't so much. There was a lot of conservatives out there, you know. Even in California, they voted for Reagan. Come on, you know. So what happened? And what's happening in Canada? How would you link that together? What's happened over there? Well, How the they, leftists, yeah. what happens, like I've been telling you, buddy, remember I told you, come on in there with me and see these Soros organizations? People need to get up on this, and that's another problem with Canadians. They, they bitch, they they point at the politicians, Trudeau, Ford, Galt, and everything, and those are just the puppets. Those people get millions and billions of dollars through the back door. The Liberal Party has way more money because it all comes to Soros and his brother from another bank, Hans George Weiss, who fund these fund these organizations through all the little funnel organizations like Arabella Advisors and everything. And what they do is they take that money, they use it to put their people in the power and use it to, to appoint people. They put These organizations give a short list. Yeah, make this guy a senator, make this guy a judge and whatnot. So they appoint them people in. And that's another problem in Canada. All our judges and everything, the senators are not elected. They're appointed. So when you're appointed you're by the government, who are you answerable to to keep your job? You're answerable to the government. You're not answerable to me, you or Charlie or uh, your uncle your uncle Joe sitting on the toilet right now. You know, they're answer they're answerable to the government. You know, we need to get these people elected and it's so hard to change the constitution here. They got it rigged. So it makes it ultra hard, to see, near impossible. What do, what do you mean? 90. Hold on a second. Slow down for a second. What do you mean, Vinny? It makes it hard to change the constitution. What What do you mean it's hard to change the Canadian constitution? What do you mean? Okay, like you want to amend the constitution or rewrite it or something to make, you know, the senators elect and everything. It's impossible to do, man. You got to have all the provinces, all these different steps. It's not like the U.S. or the French constitution where they, all the departments or all the states ratify it and it becomes law, you know, legislation. Even if Pauliev was to get in there or somebody else and say, uh, Hey, we want to uh, amend the Constitution. It's almost impossible, you know. Then they did it that way on purpose to hold this crown power. Ever since 1776, when when these when the when our ancestors didn't join the Americans, I'm speaking of my Canadian party. When our ancestors didn't join those big parties in 1776, and, and the French one in 1789, what happened? is they've been holding us. That's why they always got this narrative, Americans are wrong, Americans, you know, we want to be separate and distinct. All that is through the ages and all this modern stuff is they don't want you to know that you have rights from God. You, they don't want you to know that you have, uh, you know, God-given rights. Because right now the crown passes out to you, your rights. That's a system of divine right. It stems from old cold Louis, you know, the, the French King Louis back when this was New France. And it stems from the English, you know, system where God, thou art Solomon upon this throne. That's where it stems from that God gives the king and or the crown. The crown is an entity separate than the king and the queen role. You know, I think I told you that before. It's the thing that holds all power in the land, all authority. And what it is, is by this divine right, the crown doles out 
everything you need. And Canadians are so used to having their hand out from the government, you know, for rights, for money, for every other thing, you know, and that's a problem. And the, the government likes it like that. They like you to be all high on. Why do you think weed is there so, you know, there's nothing wrong with pot for recreational use, but they like you to be all messed up because then you, you're happy. You don't know what, you don't feel what the hell they're doing to you. Just like the Romans used to throw the big games and the Catholic Church used to throw the festivals and they still do that in Quebec, you know, the religious festival. They do that to keep the people pacified and happy, you know, because you're damn not sure going to be happy being subjugated by the crown. The Americans threw all that sh- crap out. You know, they said, we don't care you know the king uh we don't want no uh taxation we don't want no rural subjugation without us having a say in it and canadians don't really have to say they should and this is one of the reasons and then all this climate change everything is you know, whoa, 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 whoa. it's youtube baby. take it easy bro take it easy yeah you know take it easy there's certain no 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 that's like that's we that's can't like, always say uh, what we want unfortunately yeah, yeah i just separate. say the truth you know i know you do brother i, I know you do i know you do is this was is this the boston tea party was this the boston tea party no it's bad, man i had to stop him when he starts talking about weather patterns okay yeah. whoa anyways there it is right there check it out Vinny vna get over there youtube you want to hear Vinny? he speaks the truth he is he's very yeah, but check some of the playlists out and watch charlie over there in detroit too this guy's been doing it like this he's like roe here walk right in amongst the people how one roe goes and infiltrates the communist uh, uh, charlie just, will just... walk right right in the building there you know and and see what's going on you know like when when whitmer was putting all the COVID victims in the in the hospitals Charlie went in there and carried the dead bodies out to see what's going on, you know, and I'm being used like that too, Ro. We're walk, like I walk right in the nature conservancy, you know, and, and the guard chases me out because I say, hey, man, how much you spent on that mural or, you know, like that, you know, and I, I'm not scared to do that. I sit there and I question the people outside of the hearing, you know. I'm okay, so talk to me I right can. now at the inquiry. You've been going down. What's the mood? What are you hearing? You're listening to people. People are kind of loose lips. You've been telling me here and there. By the way, Vinny is the main man. People think he's an unassuming gentleman. They don't know this guy. He is watching. He is a reporter. He's a real real reporter so talk to me over here so when you're out there at the oh. inquiry what are you hearing and remember we're live so yeah brother okay what i'm seeing is uh, a lot of them is more concerned about the money or their personal glory than uh you know help and i'm talking about on both sides here you got good people on both sides you know the leftists every once in a while they come up with a good idea but it usually takes a conservative or you know somebody responsible to make the idea work right you know and well say, wait a second what'd you say what'd you say you go down there your opinion is People are what concerned more about money? Sometimes a lot of them are concerned about the kitty there. You know what I'm talking about? The all the donations and whatnot. Now Tamara, she's a, she's an angel, and, and they're throwing each other under the bus because nobody wants to take responsibility for what happened. On the other side, Miller, he's he's okay. You know, he, when he gets up there, you know, like when everybody laughs about his Miller time, and it's a serious affair. We shouldn't be laughing about that. Sure, you need a humor every once in a while, but I notice even your even our viewers here, your viewers here, they've been on a more serious tone, and a lot of them seem like really frustrated. And the only way to stop this is you know like to get up there in parliament you know and not you know protest every day at these soros organizations if you can stop the money that's feeding these people you know the liberal party then you you that's most of the problem right there you get rid of that money then maybe we can get stuff what we done and you tell these people that we want to have elected representatives elected senators elected judges this is the whole problem and what do they do the things that are elected the leftists spent so much money to get in there you got any idea how much that mass moron doctor that mirth whatever her name is that you showed the other day and yeah yeah nearly nearly kaplan mirth yeah yeah well you know how much money was spent to get her in office you know and they like doing that and then the other day like you i snuck in a couple of the hospitals i'm not saying all of them are empty like the ones i snuck in but the ones i was in buddy they didn't have nothing i sent you the video footage of that you know and let me take and a look people over were laughing. You got video People footage. You've been getting into different hospitals rather than telling me and, and checking it out. Yeah, because right. I'm the kind of guy, like, you know, you, you want to see what them abortionists or them communists are all about. You yeah. sneak right in and infiltrate in there and do, like, your own little Rohan Project Veritas, and I'm the same way, buddy. I go right to the root of the problem like Charlie would or you would, you know. 
And that's what a real reporter does. He just doesn't be a stenographer and report what somebody else said or something like that. He goes and checks it out with his own eyes and shows people with his own camera. What are, we, what are all these cameras we got for a row unless we can be a public service and help our brothers and sisters understand what the hell is going on, you know? I'm going to drop your link over here into the, into the uh, telegram room as well over here so everybody can see that. Okay, so nobody misses out. I'm going to say, Vinny. You know, buddy, I don't, yeah, I don't do the telegram thing, you know. Don't worry about don't it. Don't do, worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's what all the young, I don't do you TikTok got... neither because the Chinese con everything you put on TikTok, yeah. like say on TikTok, they say you got two thousand views to your video. You really got more like twenty. They like to exaggerate it so you stick with them, and they pull everything off your phone while you're there. Actually, when you're in the hearing, yeah, your man. computers and everything work slow because they got that hailstorm spyware tech that sucks everything out of your thing in those big towers there on top of the tourist board on right outside of Trudeau's privy office on the corner of Metcalf and uh and uh Wellington there if you look up on the building those towers aren't on any cell phone company's map you know they're I mean they work but the government filth sucks everything out of them you know they're government operated towers they're not like telecommunications company towers <laughs> what do you guys think you see now why right after I get off Right, we do this inquiry. I'm having a drink, whatever. And Vinny's giving me the lowdown, and right in my ear, I got my Bluetooth jammed right deep into my ear canal. And Vinny's just, just, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm just you know, like, Ro, yeah, when, man. when, uh, when you start your news channel, you and Pan, me and you, buddy, we got to go interview that horse to find out his view on this stuff. <laughs> Which one? Which one? The one that trampled the lady. Find, you know, we, oh, you know, oh. interview the horse, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Put him on the stand. That's what I'm saying. You know, what do you guys say? You know, what you, pretty awesome, huh? Vinny's the man. I'm telling you, this is this oh, is what the I love. Crowd I've been doing this for decades. I've been alive <laughs> since I now. I've been through three wars, buddy. You know that's why I'm disabled in my one arm. You know, and and that's why I love the veterans. You know, Neil, he's a real one. You know, the veteran you had on, he's you know, a few a little while ago before this hearing started the veteran you had on you know 95 percent right about most of his stuff but that neil's who you get on neil really uh who's says this how it is who's this neil. neil you know the one from rolling thunder oh neil from rolling thunder yeah yeah i know i had never spoken to this guy man i only seen him in like, yeah me and david team. me and know. viva frey talked to him before neil's awesome buddy okay. you know okay right and on, on that chris guy the chris the disabled guy that they you know, I go to Beachwood Cemetery. I was talking to one of our friends in uh, the States, you know, yeah. her name is Leslie Bless Your Seer over spoiled army bread over there in the States. That girl's always, you know, she's like Andy Lee. Who's she's this? Andy Lee's. You know, our Andy Lee? Yeah, yeah, but who are you talking oh, yeah. about? Yeah, we know Andy Lee, of course, man. She's yeah, well, girl. Andy yeah. Lee started, Amy Amy and Andy got together a long time ago, you know, and, the, and Andy, when she first came on, she had like 2,000-some followers, and now she's got hundreds of thousands, you know. Yeah, man. You know, 50, yeah, yeah. 60, Vinny's 70, talking about. Thousand. He's talking about Amy, who is his, uh, his wife, and uh, Andy Lee, who is... Uh, Big time Twitter investigator, really, really, really good yeah, stuff she puts out there. Andy's a real reporter too. You know the girl's awesome. And Andy Lee's trained does. under under in, in Vinny's organization VNA. Well, we oh, give okay. her some pointers. She's oh, pointers, got the natural sorry, pointers. Yeah, not she's got pointers. the natural requisite skills. And what our main job with Andy was to keep her because Andy takes everything very personally. She's a very like when they put the graffiti on the bikers' church, the girl had genuine tears in her eyes. It just how could somebody do this you know yeah, yeah i'm yeah. starting to get emotional no no now don't about cry baby. don't cry brother no, i'm not gonna cry you know oh, man. Too, no, no, i've no. seen too much shit in my life to cry buddy yeah man yeah i know i know you've been to uh where did you serve you served a few times huh where did you serve i got hurt in lebanon the same august i mean october 23rd 1983 i was riding in a u.n truck and and the Syrians were supposed to be our allies then, but they're bad shots, buddy. The shell hit the building. It killed two people in the truck with me, French and <laughs> Italian guy. And I was just going out to the PX to get some cigarettes. You know, I got off the ship and took a UN truck because I wanted to go to the friggin' PX. You know, the ship was out of cigarettes. And so I wanted to go get some cigarettes and I get myself blown up for sure. They pay me, but, you know, I'd rather have my arm, buddy, you know. Yeah. You see me walking around struggling with the camera and whatnot. Luckily, I got a couple helpers now. So yeah, yeah. You Thank you for your service. Thank yeah. you indeed, brother. Thank you indeed. Now there it yeah, is. But so I didn't learn too much. 
I didn't learn too much use for the Navy, except how to dock and uh, you know, and uh, and how to load 16-inch battleship shells, which is a useless skill now. You know, what are you going to do with that? I'm just going to make sure we got the Public Order Emergency Commission. We don't want to miss a moment. All right, I got them. No, we another, don't. No, we got them in another window here. We're good, though. We're good. We're good. We got about 15 minutes. I didn't go down there today. I just stayed in the studio. That's the studio behind me. I wish I could work my other cameras because you get better views in the picture, to be clear. Yeah. But, you know, I stayed here just to do this with you because these people got to know the stuff I said. I know I'm talking fast, but there's so much I have to tell them, buddy. So I go out there and, you know, people like me, you, David Menzies, you know, Viva Frey, we get in there with the people because that the story isn't there on Parliament Hill. You know, the story's with the people. It's what you feel, what your aunt feels, you know, what your grandma feels, you know, what you thought your grandfather felt, you know, and whatnot. And like I walked through Beachwood Cemetery, you know, and, and I went to the Battle of Britain commemoration. I walked through Beachwood and I see all the graves and I just, you know, and then they even have it. I don't know. If Canadians know this, but a bunch of Canadians died in 9-11 when the planes hit, too. They got a big monument for there in Beachwood. It's pretty. It's a nice place to walk your children through. They got peacocks there. They got turkeys there, you know, a lot of wildlife. Somebody, you know, stocked the place with wildlife, kind of. And it's not like Arlington. I've been to Arlington many times in Washington. And Arlington's actually a an old cotton plantation that Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general, donated to the states, and it's open fields with nothing but white markers. It's bigger than our little beachwood here, but you know, another one's the one there in Europe, you know, the World War One cemeteries and World War Two. But the one in here in Ottawa, you know, if anybody ever gets to Ottawa, or some of our viewers are in Ottawa, take a trip through there and just reflect on what those people went through. Yeah. Yeah, brother. We got uh, about 10, 12 minutes. I got some questions for you, Vinny, okay? Because you, okay. I mean, you said a lot, and I know you've seen a lot. You know, we're just like young spring chickens, even though I'm turning uh, white. I got white hair. Yeah, but you're smart, buddy. You you know, you're, you're a person that cares, you know, <laughs> that's you, why. Thank you, Vinny. I mean, you make a lot of jokes, but you're there and you care. You wouldn't do the crap you do, the stuff you do, the crazy stuff you do, like wandering with Rossi's communists, you know, and, and whatnot. And, you know, it's amazing that people don't know who you are, but it just it tickles me pink. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me see your Vinny. So the inquiry's going on. We got one more week. Next week, we got all these high-ranking federal officials. We've seen Privy Council people already today. We're going to see more Privy Council people. Were you watching the Privy Council, uh, the lady who was on just today? And uh, her name again was, let me see here, her name was Jacqueline Bogdan, emergency preparedness. Before that, she was manning the cannabis branch uh for the privy council and uh before january 2022 and then she started doing emergency preparedness and cvid recovery after that and it just so happened that's exactly when the uh the freedom convoy occurred so that lady right there first of all what do you think of the privy council office people and what do you expect to see next week okay that, that yes, lady sir. that was on there yesterday you know she comes wandering out of that you know the chub the, the heavy set uh blonde lady she come brian the last trucker standing down there you met him one day during rolling thunder remember i said this is brian you know Uncle brian. yeah yeah, i remember him. i remember you're talking to him okay, now about well, the lady from yesterday though right the national security yeah, advisor she comes and, that's what i'm trying to say brian's yeah. outside the privy council window and they hate him for it, right outside trudeau's office and she comes wandering across the street that lady many times you know calling about the car doing looking out the window and everything you know so i can say about that one these ones today i don't see them they sneak in and out of the building most of them go through the back door i do happen to know one of the girls jody thomas yesterday there. hold on jody right it's jody jody i think her yeah. name is right jody uh, we've got videos go of her calling the cops on brian you know if you look on our you channel. got videos of jody the national security advisor from yesterday yeah her calling then, the cops uh, on brian yeah, and then that's the same day. Remember when the cop threatened to bust my camera over my head because I was filming some goofy leftists, you know, saying everybody should get jabbed 20 times and everything? Yeah, yeah. So the cops no. were threatening you at the inquiry? No, the cops were threatening. They threatened some them with the flag the other day. That's why I like going outside to catch things that people don't see. On these slow down, feeds. slow down, slow down. So a woman comes to the inquiry, and I think you were telling me a little bit about this last night. So a woman comes to the inquiry. She's carrying two flags. A little Canadian flag, like one of them five by five by three flags or whatnot, and then she's got a big native one, and she's carrying, you know, 
save the children or whatever, but it was something to do with the natives. And she's wandering up there, you know, and they told her she can't, you know, come outside the building with the flag. You can't step foot on the property. You know, these people are, you can't be Canadian anymore in this country. And that's at the inquiry. That's outside the inquiry. At the inquiry, at the outside the building room. I see all kinds of stuff. You know, I'm sorry that it's hard for me because a lot of times I leave my camera and everything inside. You know, I'm going to start taking it outside so I can shoot you some footage of this stuff, you know. What's your last name? Helen Moore. Rapontigny. Rapontigny. There you go. Okay, let me just make sure I got this um, Vinny's page open over here. Where is it now? Vinny's page is... I dropped it in the Telegram room. Let me just open this up and make sure we got this. I want to drop this for everybody. Uh, We've got a lot of educational stuff, very informative on our channel. You know, VNA is not like, you know, a group like a war campaign, you know, or or Viva Frey, you know, or Rebel News. We're a collection of different people from all different kinds of groups. That's how we got you your press path. We give you honorary membership in it. You know, it's like people from the States people from Canada live streamers that's doing a good job, you know, like Andy Lee, they're members of VNA. VNA is a media group, like a press gallery of a bunch of real people, you know what I mean? Like you, Viva, me, Andy, you know, our friends there in the States, you know, and whatnot. We give Lisa Haven over there uh, a membership too, you know, and this guy, Revolution News, you know, the the Asian guy there that's at the hearing every day, he's, a, you know, he's a honorary member, Chris Dacey, you know, a lot of people get on Chris, but he's got, he's like us who gets right there in the middle of the mix. You know, he does, he doesn't have fear and intim- he's not intimidated by these politicians, you know, that's, and that's the kind of person you got to be if you want to be a public, you know, media is all about what you do, what I do, what every one of our members do. It's a public service role. We're not doing this for our own glory. We're doing this or how many viewers we got, you know, we've been doing this vna thing for a few years we just started our studio up in canada a couple years ago but we've been doing it about eight nine years in the states and uh we're, we're just a bunch of all fed up you know that's why tim pool left fox news that's why charlie duff left new york times you know and, and fox news you know stephen crowder the same way that because even fox tells you what to say how to say it and everything you know you want your story how you feel what you learned you want to tell the people the real deal not some you know stenograph crap or some ordered stuff you follow what i'm saying yeah man oh absolutely you want to tell the real news the real story so what do you think about the uh you know young generation coming up then uh journalists the rest and also there's a lot of personalities that have been coming up over here now uh, since the Freedom Convoy. What's well, the your... good ones, we try and get them to join us, you know, to give them a little hand and everything, sure. you know, and we try and teach them to be real reporters, not all, you know, soft labeled, soft glorifying journalists, you know, because then the stories, you know, they're just trying to make themselves sound better. What you are is your reporter, your broadcast commentator, your YouTube creator. If you're good at you, if you're good at what you do, you shouldn't have to, you know, self glorify yourself under the label of journalist. You know, if you write, journalists write, if you write, Andy Reid writes articles and stuff. And if you write more than a Twitter comment, you know, like Twitter comments and, you know, Twitter analysis opinions are kind of like journalism, quasi journal. If you do that, that's good too. But don't call yourself a journalist if you're not. Call yourself what you are and be proud of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Let me see in the chat here. We got some comments. I want to read them. I want we, to see some pictures of the rattlesnakes, Pan. <laughs> yeah, we, we're lucky out here. I'm towards the coast, and lucky enough we don't have any here. Those are more towards like central and southern Oregon. Down, to, I got some cousins down in those areas. Like Walla so. Walla and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bend and uh, you no know, Prineville areas. Yeah, man. They got snakes down there for sure. It's amazing how there's a desert right there. Yakima, Washington. You know, up north in in Oregon. You know, it's like. There's a desert up there, and and it's still like green and orchards and everything. It totally amazed me when I was coming through there, buddy. Yeah, it's about- unique. Like you have like the rainforest type, um, you know, stuff towards the coast, and then you got like the desert down, you know, central a little bit. You got mountains. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, the cities are trash, but there's still lots it's of great weird people how out right in the country. Next door is- big republican enclave in idaho there you know and all these trumpers and free citizens and everything and then right next door in oregon it's blue you know it's like crazy buddy there's been talk of uh eastern oregon 
they want to break away and uh and you know, unite Idaho, with right? idaho exactly yeah yeah so <laughs> that's a thing sorry to interrupt yeah. you fine fellows i've got um couple comments over here. Kat says, I'm on my third flag. Someone took it from my car window. I'm in Whitby, Ontario. We've got uh, Liquid Gal says, keep dreaming if you think little peepee's going to save Canada. We've got Margot P, journalist seeking celebrity, have lost a pran. We've got a question for you from Silver Sadie. Ask him about Rachel Gilmore, lol. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. y- you know, uh, Rachel Gilmore, she's not a journalist. She's a, she's a stenographer and all this. She Look, if you watch this lady that's on there today as a witness, watch her eye. She's looking at that screen. You know, it's, um, it's, I'm not saying it's a teleprompter because I'm not there. I don't know. But if I was there, I'd sneak up there and look at the screen and see, buddy, I'm that kind of guy. And it, watch her eyes. She's reading it. And when she answers, when she's doing her answers, she'd be reading off the screen like Joe Biden. You know, I wouldn't put it past them using that screens as a teleprompter. Even the guy with the beard, buddy. And you got to give that guy some beard lessons, buddy. His beard ain't nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, bro, you know, thanks no, for having me on today. No, and, and I hope people tune into the VA yeah. group channel there and they see some of the playlists. We've got all Faith Goldie's old stuff. And the stuff she was saying, you know, 10 years ago is coming true. It's still going on today, which is a sad buddy, you know? Yeah, man, it is. It is. It is. Absolutely, man. You know, you know Faith Goldie, huh? Yeah, I've met her before. I don't know her personally. I know her friend, though. Okay. All right. Right on, man. Yeah. All these like Chris Sky. I know him. I've talked to him before, but I, you know, I know David pretty well. You know, I talked to him every time he was marching around in the cold, like we were, buddy. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I hung around with David. You know, I feel kind of, kind of sad that he took off to the states. I'm not going to call him a coward or anything. He'd done what he thought was best for the, his family. You know. But he, I hopefully he does more Canadian stuff instead of, you know, just opining on the American stuff. He wants to be part of America. That's kind of why he's doing it. But, you know, he was trained at law like like I was, like as the event was. And that's a that's a plus because you understand, you know, what's going on and how it got to that way today. Like I'm telling people about this divine right. Mm-hmm. You know, I talk fast because I got so much to say, buddy. I, you know, I'm I'm a pissed off kind of guy like you, buddy. No, I love it. I love it. There you go. That is Mr. Vinny from VNA. You can check him out on Twitter. Okay, VNA Can USA. Going to drop that right there into the chat. You also got VNA on YouTube. He just started out while he's, you know, Vinny's old school, man. You know, he's more being putting together teams, that kind of thing. Like I'm saying, I don't, yeah, we don't care so much about followers. The only thing followers are, they're not trophies for personal glory. The more followers you have, the more you got the message out. That's where the followers count. You know, don't be racking them up as points. You know, look at me, look at me. And especially these TikTokers and everything. TikTok inflates the uh, thing. And some of these some of these other companies, not to mention no names, all you can't, we can't show you this because, uh, you know, because YouTube don't want us to. What are you doing when you're doing that? You're being a coward. You're giving YouTube what they want, you know. But I understand with some because they invested so much in their companies, they don't want to lose it, you know. But you watch people like me. You watch people like Charlie Duff. You watch people like Tim Poole, Dave Rubin. they They say it anyways, you know, and no matter on twitter it's getting a little bit easier since Musk took over but youtube you know i agree with ezra they're little cutthroats and stuff i will give him that credit and ezra he's one of the best you know when he gets his butt out of the studio and he does the reporting himself you ever see that guy in action he's pretty damn good he's old school like us right on man beautiful there you go man check it out all right check it out there is mr Vinny from vna you know and i get a lot of i'm telling you this guy he's We've got to do some investigation. He's got an idea of investigation downtown. I don't want to get too much into it. I want to help you on this news channel, buddy, you know, when you and Pan do the news channel because, you know, I'll get my butt out there in the street where you can't and we can get this thing tied up and get everything good, buddy. You know what I mean? Right on, man. Absolutely. Well, yeah, well, let's get this inquiry sorted out. And then I'm going to yeah, take... Yeah, Pan for- could do a lot of stuff up there in Oregon, Oregon, you know, because he'd probably be pretty good. You know, he knows oh, what's yeah. going on, you know, to infiltrate some of them leftist places and show people the real deal, you know? And yeah, we should do that. We should get him out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can stand being around the communists, but, uh, you know, I, I'll take one for the team if I have to. Yeah, you take a team with you. You know, I know I know a couple of veterans up that way. You know, I got a lot of people still in the military and whatnot. I got friends and with the bike clubs and stuff we can get a couple of them boys to go with you and trust me you'll be good 
right yeah, on. Yeah, it's something we can uh, yeah. talk about in the future for sure. Those yeah. subs are moving. Right. Send him pictures yeah. of them rattlesnakes. I don't think Roll believes how big they are there. Absolutely. <laughs> Helen Moat says, Pan is extra smart with lots of hearts. That's right. Awesome to see and hear Vinny. Why does he have such a small YouTube channel? Because he's being a, like a reporter on mainstream TV channels, all that kind of stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, a lot well. of our stuff, like yeah. Andy sends her stuff to True North and we send our stuff to like the Detroit stations, you know, down in New Orleans. We send it there and they use a lot of clips out of it. Then I use everything full shows we do, you know, and like Andy, she's had her stuff on True North and whatnot and, you know and that's what we do we're like i said we're a media group we're, we don't you know our channel's mostly just for members but you know anybody's welcome to see it it's how we share our stuff personally you know and then you know get it out there to the public you know some of the people like i said vna itself as a group doesn't have that many you know subscribers or anything we, we could use some more it's mostly just group members and then you know we could use some more we got quite a few followers there you Twitter. go Vinny. we're getting started brother order a lot okay well i'm gonna join in too because i want to see all right, the rest man. of this stuff i gotta watch it hey Vinny. hey brother there. okay you guys Ciao. all right brother the commission is reconvened the commissar okay Vinny. Okay, people you heard that you got educated a little bit now before i go on to what what vna does and a little bit more about me so you get a feel for me you know those that don't know me what we're going to do is play something from the great the great charlie LaDuff in this and he's going to tell you you know he's our who was my mentor but i try to to show the other people that come aboard bna what real reporting is all about and this is what real reporting is all about what charlie's going to show you here so i'm going to play you know something from him and then we're going to get into the original thing like i said what i originally done this morning but let's tune into charlie right now and you guys are going to get a real education here, what re real reporting is all about. You know, the news is a friggin' public service and whatnot, and, and you you care more about the people that you serve, you know, the people I'm talking to you right now, you, your aunt, whoever the hell's down the road, I'm talking to you guys, so I'm trying to, you know, do the best job I can here, so bear with this old fire while I do this. All right, well, let's get on with Charlie so you can see what real reporting is all the hell about. Okay, thank you. Everybody's got a history. Most everybody comes from nowhere. In every family, there's a cousin no one wants to admit to. We make stories about such people. Detroiters almost exclusively. Working people, most definitely. The dandies and the swells and the connected people we know say we make stories about losers and less thans. But they're wrong. We make stories about people. Our people. People who live in crowded apartments and ranch houses. People who shovel their own snow. And people who shovel other people's bullshit. People with fat aunties who wear stretch pants with stains on the ass. We don't do stories about people who pay doormen to open their door. We do stories about the doormen. We make stories about the laborer, the dreamer, the hustler, and the immigrant. Whether he's a writer from Michigan or a waiter from Michoacan. When the cocktail set tells us they enjoy our cast of losers, we never mind them. We just smile and drink their liquor because they don't know what work is. You know what I hear a lot? Charlie LaDuff Newsman, I thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I'm doing the news, the real news, right here, the No BS News Hour. You can find us on YouTube, you can find us on Facebook, Odyssey, or download it wherever you get. Okay, people, you just heard Char the great Charlie the Duff, you know, tell you what it's all about, and he's giving you an education. He's going to, all you new aspiring, you know, live streamers, TikTokers, you know, and all that stuff, you know, put away your bullshit and listen to what the man said and what I'm telling you right now. You know, you're not 
be proud of what the hell you are, you know, and, and do a good job at it. You know, get out there and do what you got to do, but do it right. You know, you're an important part of the media, too, you know, ever since this convoy here in Canada. A lot of people picked up their cell phones and went and tried to play journalists. You know, some of them are pretty damn good at it, but, you know, realize what you are and, and that and realize TikTok's cheating you, too, with speaking of TikTok and the Chinese are watching you. <laughs> okay, I'm not getting any further of that, but that was great. Now we're going to get into some other stuff we've done and trying to copy what... You know, Bill Vaughn's down in Detroit, you know, and some of the great reporters out in New York City, Chicago, all over the place. The real ones, you know, you got to be a reporter. You got to be there serving your people, you know. Like, I once heard one of the Detroit guys, uh, uh, Ewell Perkins, you know, talking about this, that we're a public service, you know, and you got to do what you got to do, you know, and do it right. So, without any further ado, let's see what we do at BNA. And here's some of the stuff we do. This guy, I'm going to show you now, he looks like a blooming idiot. But it's a person, man. You know, he's got feelings. He's out there trying to help you. He's out there alone with one friggin' flag. March up and down RCMP's trying to throw him off and everything. You know, he's like Pastor Arthur. He's, he's an immigrant, too. He's not, you know, he's not like native-born to Canada. But he's here and he's trying to be Canadian. He's trying to do stuff to help the country, help his people, you know, help the children. Watch this guy talk. He looks like an idiot with this mask on. His name is Thomas. But when you hear him talk, he talks like Pastor Arthur. Why do these people from Poland know, you know, about oppression and tyranny and all that? That's another question, you know, because right? they lived through it. So listen to him. Listen to this guy. He looks like an idiot, but he's, you know, people's calling him names and stuff. But he's out there trying. Listen to this guy. Some of these, I don't know if you guys seen Charlie's cast when he was in the real. It was on Tucker, so probably you guys in Canada watch Tucker. You know, you should turn into just Charlie's channel, not just Fox News. You know, Fox News is... Uh, you know, a little bit of glorification there and sensationalism and all that. A lot of what they say is true, but, you know, you want to watch the real people, you know, and, and whatnot. That's why we showed you the stuff from Charlie. So without any further ado, let's get into the stuff we do and you see what we're trying to do here. Okay, and listen to this Polish guy. All right, thanks, for, thanks, and then we're going to continue. The problem was, was politics. It was construction in the middle of the road. No. That was the problem. No. Yes, that was a fucking problem. There was no other problem. Everything else was... Oh, everything is fine. Yeah, yeah. So, so the human animals deserve to get beat up. It's simply, it's, 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 you're right. Like that. Are you ready to do an interview? It, it, so I could. I, I, I don't know what we could talk about. Okay, I'm going to do the questioning. You don't mind this going on American television, though? I, I, I don't mind. I hope I can do it right. I okay, everybody. let's go over here yeah. in the corner, yeah. then. I'm simply asking the people the question today. Do they believe it's okay for the government to attack the public, basically? <laughs> yeah, I noticed that guy was laughing. With, with, without now. anything, other actions. Just attack, attack, attack. Remember? Yeah, I noticed that guy was there. You know what I figured today? I figured that this entire thing, with the bracket starting to show up, I, I truly believe through all that on COVID, leave only to buy time to build up the narrative that these are not heroes this is a problem these are criminals these are terrorists so these people came in with lots public support at first as heroes as freedom fighters as people who are standing up saying you know what's what's happening and then got induced to the media propaganda and the time period that they needed to buy to turn them into terrorists to send military troops after these did you, were, 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 I know you're from Poland, yes, were, were you there when solidarity happened? Yes, I was. Absolutely. And you fought the communist regime? Yeah, it, well, as, as far as a 12 year old can fight. Uh, yeah, 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 but you saw it all, you, 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 you experienced it and it was... Yes, absolutely. It was, it was pretty much the same thing there as what's going on now here. It, 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 you can say there's a lot of similarities. Uh, we, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, back in 81, uh, in Poland, the, the communist regime declared the martial law on the yeah. table. Now the first so-called Western leader or, or leader of the Western world was actually Pierre Trudeau. Yeah. The first one to support martial law in Poland. He, he was clapping. And this is actually the same time period as this man is preparing the Canadian chapter of rights on freedoms. Yeah, well, when, when, when Trudeau... When Trudeau called out the war measures, I had a lot more reason than this kid did, though. I mean, they were finding dead bodies and they were... Right, they were down. Yeah, yeah, this, this one here, 
this kid, he, he did it for Bouncy Castle. I don't know what he would have done if he would have been in all into, you know, or in Detroit in the 60s when tanks and, and, and they were shooting and, they, you know, it's different, different. Different, different scenario, however, same similar approach from the government. So yeah. is it okay for the government to go out at the public and beat them up for, no, for raising questions about their lives, about, uh, you know, their everyday Yeah, our American audience in Detroit is always endless what's going on in the river. This is a little bit far away from Detroit, but this is where what happens across the river. This is the cause of what happens across the river. Right. And they blocked off the bridge there, you know. Right, right, right. So, so there might have been some tense moments, like you said, at the bridge. It was, yeah. it was and, and that is only showing you the larger support than just the group here in, in yeah. uh, the tracker group here in Ottawa itself. It was uh, nationwide. Bottom line is, in my opinion, the government did not anything to resolve this issue. Uh, I would think these people are there to talk issues out, to, to use diplomacy. Do you know, none of these things. Do you believe do you, Canada was founded on the divine right of kings, like it, that God gives the uh, crown or the king the, all the rights and then they pass it out to you? Right. And, but, you know, Polish people and American people like Pastor, are, they believe that God gives the rights to each person. To each person. And that's the problem here in Canada. Canada. Yeah. You know, you have one rights this day, you have another rights this day, whenever they decide, you know, to, what rights to give you, that's, that's the problem here. That and a lot of the people are directed to appoint it. In, well, in, in general, the crown findings, like uh, the, the the foundation of, of crown monarchs and stuff, is is, uh, is a lord and servant idea. Yeah. And that's why we've been taught to serve, serve countries. This yeah. is our biggest thing to yeah. do, to to do service. Uh, it's funny how people don't live through stuff. Uh, don't don't you know? It takes experience to live through. Like you lived in Poland, and I lived through the Detroit riots. You know, okay. it, it's. Uh, it's people need to know and feel it sometimes or listen to people that's been there you know right right you're not doing this because you don't know what's happening just like pastor Arthur, he lived through it too you know right right well we've seen the tanks we've seen all that i mean if, if you look around this is actually very uh, easy to observe for thousands of years for humanity has been living within some kind of systems be it monarchy empire you know, dictatorship, democracy, they actually all the same thing, they just take different, different angles and, and drive yeah. them apart. But in fact, if, if we observe, uh, there were no... It all, it all boils down to the basic human things of greed and, you know, power. Yeah, I, I agree with you, you know, and it's it's wrong. And just one guy out here, outside of the thing, is is good. Are you keeping tab of what's going on there on the phone? Uh, somewhere in the afternoon, I'll get yeah. some portion of it, get some uh, opinions. Well, if anything, this, these proceedings, Will only and these testimonies will only further show uh, that the federal government was never interested in solving it, in addressing. Yeah, because the they asked the guy, the one guy from the OPP, are you were you trying to close down the, the occupation of the protests? And he said he said pretty much like the protest, you know. And then he said that you can have protests afterwards, but every time there's a protest, it's by conservatives. The police are there to try and knock it down. You know, but it's okay to have the, the abortion protest, you know, pro abortion. Yeah. It's okay to have all that communist protest. Well, we just, just a few weeks prior, we had the, the Black Lives Matter movement. It was also like a global, global movement. Yeah. Uh, people were knocking statues here, painting statues. Yeah, well, that's part of the deal. Well, you live through communism, so you know, in order to build their, their socialist utopia, right. what they want to do is destroy everything old so they can build it up the way they want and new. You know, that's, that's, that's their play, and they're doing it. I would agree. The long march way by putting all these educators and in intelligence I can't put, I'm, that's twisting my tongue all the people in the in the in the uh, social circles are putting everybody can in companies that are orientated towards the left towards that Marxist long ball these failed radicals are running our educational system now and then they teach the kids they like to teach the kids all this crap because they go home and the parents argue with them because the parents know better start to fight divide and, and, the and, family and, and there you go so, so yeah yeah so this is going rooting really deep into every uh, throughout every aspect of, of community the educational system you know, that right there, I'm looking at his sign out that right there where it says uh, Justin Trudeau Dynasty 2. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much the truth about things too, the, the dynasty, you know, he feels that he's got a right to rule by, dyna by dynastic uh, right or something. I, I think these beings are uh, not leaders as they like to present themselves because they are not leading, they are not fa fathers of, of community, Canadian community, they, they use force, they beat people up. They are rulers, not leaders. Exactly. So this and is just like a... You know, people, people see somebody 
with the mask, you know, and what they think that that they're all a bunch of nutcase like this leftist, like this lefty, that you're a very intelligent, university educated man. I enjoy talking to you today. And we'll talk more, you know, I just have to think up the right questions that the public wants to hear. We broadcast to the American, to the Canadians too, so. Fantastic. But I, uh, one thing to go uh, with the American audience is you guys have a much better system than the monarch system here because within the monarch system there is absolutely no human rights. So. Maybe well, they get. They say you have rights, but their rights supersedes it. Well, well, well the thing, yeah. Well, so, so the thing is, the human rights only became about a couple hundred years ago. So we went through thousands of years of being dominated by exactly by, by warlords, yeah, and warlords, landlords, and, and all this stuff. So these human rights is actually all we have. As now a you had some kings that were fairer than other kings and more just, but then but it still boils down to power and rulers. You're right. So the story begins. This is actually easy to observe when we look at Europe before kings. Yeah. So Poland was like a you know bunch of tribal people. You know whatever yeah. they had their own little community. Yeah. Everybody had their house. Kind of like the Vikings. You could say. Uh, they didn't have act of ownership. This was your house. Everybody yeah. knew. We built a new one if you have kids. You know, no, you didn't have to sign a paper. No, there. no act of ownership. So one day, this military unit shows up with a king surrounded by army. Yeah. And he says, I own the law here. According to this law, I claim this land and everything that is on this land because it works on land claims. And then he introduced the act of ownership where he was the only owner of everything. Yeah. Uh, the man uh, had a, a right to Bitcoin, which yeah. is also big. That's the entire financial system today. Bitcoin. Yeah. Mid so, so these are all tools of authority that the king and ruler brought onto the people. The idea here is all this expansion does not happen in the best interest of the people. It's not there to make them free. It's in fact is is doing the opposite. Have you met Pastor Art? Have you met Pastor Art yet? I, uh, I I have. I spoke with him on the phone a couple of times. Yeah, he, he's but very. Like a year back so. Yeah, he's very he's very good. I feel sorry for what the persecution he's been under. Yeah. I hope they don't persecute you there. So it might be a good idea you wear the mask sometime. Yeah. 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 Stay hidden. Okay, I got to get back into this emergency hearing, That's but I try and come out and talk to you some more in these next couple of days. You're out here every day, okay. and that shows just one man. Sometimes it takes one man with one step foot forward for pe for the group to do and it's, it's the most i can do myself yeah yeah you're doing you know. all you can at least you're doing something instead of sitting on your ass yeah. all right well, human rights is all we have without that we just uh, we can just kneel down and, and say yes lord you i say, didn't even get your name you i didn't even get your name what's your first name uh, thomas okay thomas okay thank you i'm vincent, sorry, you? Oh, vincent. vincent yeah. Okay, yeah all right nice meeting you vincent. okay thank you hey, yeah we can expand on your podcast Okay, now you you saw that. That's a, that's you know I'm not gonna say it's a normal person because he's he's super intelligent and everything, and he's who dresses weird and whatnot. But he's a Canadian. You heard what he had to say. Now I sometimes we do like talk to MPs. I'm gonna show you something. I talked. I was up on the hill. Sometimes I'm up there because sometimes you gotta find out from the big shots to inform the little people what they're planning to do to you, you know, and everything and what you what they they are. And I told Mr. Singh he had promised me an interview, you know, Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP party. You know, I said, look, Mr. Singh, I'm not going to put you on camera. This is between me and you, right? And I talked to him. I told him he's got to stop being Trudeau's bitch, basically, is what I said, not in those terms. So anyways, I talked for about 20 minutes up there on the hill, and then as he was leaving, I caught some Indian subcontinent kind of types talking to him. So I ran down there, and I interviewed him because I wanted, you know, him to show that he's you know rebel news guy runs after him and uh omar and they they don't want to talk to him because they know they're going to say something bad him you give somebody a fair interview they're talking you, you know like sing you know he's very friendly with that day you're going to see this this is at the end of my interview with him you know when i caught him leaving talking to a group of his constituents or whoever they were down there i don't know if they're from india or from canada like toronto or something but they were there now watch this and you see that we not only talk to the regular people, on occasion we do talk to the the people that run, that hold the power in, in the land, but they're just the, the mouthpieces, you know, the puppets of the puppet masters, you know, Soros and everything, which Rohan and I is going to show you eventually. You know, we're going to go infiltrate those Soros and Hans George Weiss organizations. There's a ton of them block away from power. Anyways, look at what we did here with Singh. You know, not for the glory that, oh, we talked to Singh. 
it's a show how to interview somebody you know you're friendly to them and everything and you're you're righteous and they know you're not going to you know you're going to tell it fair just like they said it you're not going to uh you know try and crucify them for it or anything you know only if they deserve like my godfather who was good for taking politicians out of office you know he's one of the best that's why they were all scared of him you know but sometimes it's best to to just be do your job and do it right and you know you can play around with them a little bit when they're in the mood to play like Singh was but anyways watch this one with Jagmeet Singh and you'll see some other things we're capable of thank you <laughs> I was just proving the public that Mr. Singh will talk to conservative media. He's not scared like Omar. Yeah, we should. We should. Yeah, yeah. Power to, we should like, meet up. Take care. Right. Thank Mr. You. Singh, Mr. Singh, I just wanted to prove that you're talking to conservative media. You're not scared like Omar. No, no, no. Not scared. Exactly. Me. Thank you, no, Mr. Singh. Not Sikhs are not scared of anyone. Okay, now. Okay, you just saw Singh. So now we're going to interview another normal another uh, regular Canadian one of the freedom fighters there and you can see you know these are regular people this is who you report on you know it's okay to you know talk to or you know interview the VIPs at once in a while when what they're saying is applying to the people and it's affecting the people you know you just don't do it for the sake of look who I'm with and all that kind of bullshit Anyways, this is a regular guy. You're going to hear where you interviewed them, him in front. He went to the hearing. He's working with uh, with uh, Justin at uh, Revolution News now. This guy, you know, Kyle is very intelligent. You hear what he's saying. And he's a, he's a damn good, you know, broadcaster and stuff. You know, commentator in his own right. And that's why they keep locking him up. You know, these are the ones that he's the one that Trudeau's police beat the living shit out of during the truckers convoy. Anyways. Let's hear from Kyle, and you'll see what that part of reporting is all about with the people again. All right, thanks, thanks, and then we're near the end of the cast. I don't want to make this too long today. Just want to give you guys an impression of what's going on. And without any further ado, I'm going to interview this Canadian. He's been here since the first day of the the convoy, pretty much. Yeah. You want to tell America how you feel about this? As a Canadian, you feel this is fundamentally unfair, the way they got this deck stacked against these people, all the leftist witnesses are calling up? Well, I, there were, I'm not the only one who thought it was odd that the Prime Minister himself, the one who is under investigation essentially after this, is running the hearing. He's running the process. He's allowed to insert, ask this question, ask this question, ask this question. So he's allowed to lead the uh, the the inquiry it seems kind of flaccid in my opinion. it's kind of like the catholic church running the inquisition right it's kind of brutal, yeah. yeah yeah and you're canadian too yes i am yeah i've seen you before around at the thing i've seen andy lee talking to you i've seen bethany talking to you yeah <laughs> but he this guy right there got the camera point on now He's battled it with the cops. They've beaten him up. They've dragged him away. They dragged him to Toronto, and he's back. Toronto's what, 500 miles from here? Something like that. Yeah. This guy's here every day almost. You know what it said? This is no word of a lie. You know what it said? In my jail cell in Toronto in 14 Division, my jail cell when I got in there. They I, had your name there already? No. Somebody had carved into the metal, the, the paint, the, the, the metal door, the paint with something they'd carved pray to god the living love most high yeah so trust me i prayed to god when i was in there because i didn't know what was going to happen to me i didn't know how long they were going to keep me in jail when you're in jail and you're listening to other inmates yeah. say things that are pretty that means that oh everyone here is pretty familiar with jail uh it's not a great place to be for someone who's not intending to be there in life right that's jail is a terrible place for someone to be and the people that got arrested at the pro a lot of the people that got arrested like you it wasn't no hey here's a re personal reconnaissance you can go no they kept you out of the mix for at least a day and yeah. other people hit the court and they get out the same hour 
kind yeah, of like they either if they if they beat you up too bad then they can't arrest you they have to just tell you to go away yeah but they, if they beat you up just a little bit then they can arrest they you they took at the convoy sense. after they beat you up they just dropped you out of town that day well i was i was i was released because uh i i wasn't really dressed for it so they they, uh, they let me go and they said okay well don't come back but i just came back about an hour later and went to the front and started giving the police shit <laughs> for standing by while a bunch of tactical teams grabbed civilians, unarmed civilians, who probably would have thought the worst thing would happen is that they were get grabbed onto, turned around and arrested, not beaten, you know, had the hell beaten from them. I don't think anybody assumed that was gonna happen at all. I mean, I lived through the Detroit riots and this was like a, a kid's cat, this is like a kid's play show. Everybody's happy after being out two years. So they, you know, they, Sure, I'm out now. Look, they're not arresting, buddy. I'm going downtown and joining, you know, seeing other people and doing everything. After being locked up two years, you don't want to sit at the house, you know. Anybody, if they pulled this shit in the states, it would it wouldn't have been peaceful like this, you know. I was through Ferguson and whatnot. Faith Goldie was down there when that happened, and it's just crazy what's happened. Pretty soon they should get out. The CBC's allowed in there. And I could go in there and have a press pass, but I'd, I'd just be okay. wait. I'd be okay with having our American brothers and sisters uh, come here, come, come, come here to help us. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them. Come worried, on, a lot on, of, boys and girls. A lot of, them's wor a lot of them's worried about crossing the border, though, with all these crazy restrictions they had, you know. And they have a lot of them don't have a clue unless they see the news, what's going on. Tim Pool was showing it for a while, and it's a shame how a lot of Americans disfocus from this. Come to see us. Come to see us, brothers yeah. and sisters. Come. Exactly. Okay, well, they're doing because something. Because the thing is, too, the more Americans that were here, the police would really have a really hard time. Kind of, uh, it's kind of it would be an international incident if they started arresting and beating up Americans. But I'm I'm glad, like, so, Americans, come on, come I'm on. I'm glad guys. there was no violence here. Even though, like I said to a couple of people, if they would have locked their arms and just pushed forward without throwing blows, a lot of them would have got hurt. But you know, they would have won against the police that day. That's what I'm feeling. You know, not be violent, just march forward like Nelson Mandela style or Martin Luther King style. And they didn't do that because Canadians are programmed to be nonviolent whenever possible. Get them in a war, though, and they're, they're, they're winning the battle, usually. Yeah, well, On D-Day, the Canadians give the Nazis hell. Yeah, I guess we'll see what It just sort of seems like after the last couple of years with everything that's gone on that things uh, that the, the crimes happen and that the, they will be caught up to for a long time okay. if at all right so can you hit my button there again john hundreds of thousands okay you guys saw kyle there and you know we're interviewing a regular person now i'm gonna interview somebody from the states you know he's born in the states but he's canadian there's so much intermingling like in detroit there you got the people over in windsor you know and whatnot. I'm gonna try and get my my ass back over there to Detroit. You know, eventually I just got so much stuff to move. You know, I'm gonna try and go there. You know, in the Windsor area and do it from there instead of Ottawa. The only reason we picked Ottawa because it's like the crossroads of the two, the the French and the English culture. You know, and it's where everything meets and it's what's happened in Ottawa. You know, but or at least I get my butt to Detroit more. You know, over there to Windsor more. You know, because we need. You know, it's. The two co countries are intertwined, man. The, the trade is U.S. and Canada's the biggest trade partners. You know what's going on here is is Canada, Trudeau, and I, so I'm not going to blame any particular politician. It's been going on for centuries how, uh, you know, they try and split. They try and tell the Canadians, oh, you're sep we're separate and distinct from the United States. You know why they don't, like I said in their cast, a little t uh, excerpt with me and Roe there. They don't want you to be... Uh, to know that the Canadians that they have individual rights, they don't want you to be, you know, have the freedom they did in the states. It's been that way ever since the revolution. You know that's why, you know, the people that were loyal to the king come up here to Canada. You know when the when the Americans had their big 1776 party, you know they thought they were being loyal and everything, and they got screwed up the butt because now the government doles out the rights. The government supersedes all the rights to the individual up here in Canada. Anyways, we're gonna listen to this guy from Texas here. You know, and whatnot. He's Canadian. He's, you know, like me, a duel and everything. But he's up here, and his name is John. And this is a regular Canadian. You're dealing with the same kind of people as Americans, pretty much. They're just a little bit more polite or something. I don't know. But me, I'm, he was raised in the States, so I'm just, you can hear it in my voice and what I say. 
you know, even though I was born here and whatnot. But anyways, let's listen to John here, and then we're going to close out this cast for the day. And we got something awesome coming this afternoon, like you used to say. Stay tuned for, you know, what's coming up. We're going to be interviewing a, a mother. You're just a regular Canadian girl here, because I do better when I'm talking to somebody. We're going to discuss some of these issues then tonight. You know, just a regular person I'm going to have sitting in the chair there in front of me. And the camera's going to be on her. We're going to be talking, just talking, you know. And we're going to be looking. We're going to go through this cast about Detroit was that Stephen Crowder done, you know, Detroit in ruins, you know, Crowder goes ghetto. We're going to watch that, and we're going to put input in as we're watching it with the audience. But anyways, so let's get. I'm talking with the guy who spent a lot of time in America. You weren't born there, were you, John? I was. I was born in uh, Texas. Okay, you were born in Texas. I was born in Texas, and. Uh, 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 my uh, mom's side of the family was Canadian, and uh, so I am a Canadian by heredity, and uh, I've been living in Canada for the last 35 years. Uh, I moved here uh, to go to Carleton University, and so uh, Ottawa is my uh, Canadian hometown, but uh, I was born and raised in Texas, and uh, I uh, am uh, lending my efforts here to the Freedom Fighting Movement. Uh, we are here to... Uh, uh, create a future of, of freedom and fairness. Uh, we're looking for freedom and peace, and uh, we're looking for justice. And uh, we've all been through a terrible trauma. Uh, the last uh, two and a half uh, years have just been terrible for everyone, and we've discovered that uh, our society has a level of corruption that uh, if you don't deal with it in a very uh, decisive way, uh, it, it's, it's seriously bad news. And so there's a lot of people who are standing up and uh, their talents, and uh, uh, their efforts are starting to add up, and the movement is starting to succeed, and uh, the uh, fire uh, for freedom is burning, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna keep on burning. Like you, me, Andrew Shear, Stephen Crowder, Ted Cruz, like you, me, Andrew Shear, Stephen Crowder, we're we're you know dual citizens, so you know, and we know what's headed south, so that's why we're here. That's, that's right. That's right. We're all brothers and sisters, and uh, you know. Uh, uh, Canadians and Americans are more similar than they are different, uh, and uh, I am in Canada because it is a distinct culture. It is different than America, and I'm here. I came to Canada for the good life. This is the this is the good life. It used to be good. <laughs> That's right. And uh, but the truth is, is that uh, Americans and uh, are, you know everyone else, these are our brothers and sisters, and we need to bind together. We all have a common enemy. You know this is the problem. Our enemy is not any particular government or any particular person, or politician, or doctor, or lawyer, or uh, policeman. Our enemy is the, uh, uh, the corruption that has gotten into these people, and uh, we're looking for uh, salvation and redemption. What do you think about all the Soros dark powers? Uh, I think that uh, our enemies are formidable and uh, sophisticated, and we have to be very realistic about uh, who our opponents are. And they're well funded, they're organized, they're fully staffed. Yeah, and a lot of times, a lot of times, people just look at the puppets instead of the puppet matter. That's right. That's right. And uh, people are waking up to this, and uh, the task is not. Important. Possible. Although it is a, a monumental task, it is not impossible. And uh, the evidence for this is, is look around at the freedom fighters you see standing around you, and you're going to find the strongest people you will ever okay, see. Okay, I'm going to pan in around and look at those people. Yeah. Every single one of them, right? Is, yeah. Uh, these are just some of the strongest people ever. And the strength comes from their moral character. That is the strength. And that gets taught to them as young children. Yeah. And they want to destroy that. They want to stop that. That's exactly right. The right. morality in the home and the church. And That's exactly right. We used to have institutions that uh, help us maintain our moral characters. And that has all been destroyed. And thus, our moral character has been destroyed. And we need to build it back up. And uh, listen, I don't propose any specific act. But we all better get started up the mountain. Because uh, it's bad fucking weather down here. And uh, yeah, brother, I'm glad you're here. And uh, maybe you're doing a great job. And uh, a lot of people think that the protesters are idiots or uh, uneducated morons. You know, that's that's not the story at all. That's why I had you up here. People can hear. This is we heard from Thomas, the Polish guy, who's going to hey, yes. Yeah. But he sounded, you know, what he said, he said, like, Pastor Arthur, you know. He's, uh, uh, all of these people are uh, not what they appear to be, and uh, they are uh, they are strong, they are smart, they're intelligent, they're uh, educated. But most of all, uh, the, the thing that binds them all together is that they all uh, know right from wrong. Yeah. Every single one of them. Now, there may be some smart ones, there may be some pretty ones, there may be some tall ones and some bad ones, all different kinds of people. Maybe even be a couple dumb ones, but they love their country. Now, listen, I'll, I'll, take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, but 
let me tell you, uh, we all know right from wrong, and that's what binds us together, yes? And so, uh, listen, anybody who knows right from wrong uh, uh, needs to come and join us. Stand up, get up, get out of your chair, walk across the room, come down here and join us, and wherever you are, do what you can do. Find your neighbor, find your friend, and we're going to see this all the way through to the end, my brother. Well, Kyle will say it. Come on, Americans, come on, you're most likely to rock your group. And he's right, you know, when a lot of American truckers walk through, you saw the fights, you know. Listen, we're all fighting the same enemy. Exactly. And, uh, and people don't realize that. They think this is just a Canadian issue. This is a worldwide issue. A worldwide issue. And they're doing the same thing to our brothers and sisters in Australia and New Zealand and uh, all across the Commonwealth, everywhere across the planet, right? And so we know that our enemies, our enemies are not, uh, that these are uh, beyond uh, nations, right? And so we want to get prepared to deal with the reality of the situation. And I think more and more people are waking up to the to the to the uh, hard sad truth of the situation the lowdown you might say and uh listen uh, uh after they pick themselves up uh you know we all got the food mark on us but uh, uh we're gonna bind together and we're gonna overcome and um uh, i believe that we can succeed and i think we're winning already and uh, uh we got a ways to go but brother we got we got canada's joan of arc right over there that's right that's right i don't know if you guys can see tamara We've got to move a little bit so they can see. That's Tamara there, standing over there by the thing. I don't know if you guys can see her yet. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Ben. It's great to see you. Okay, yeah, great, great job. Thank, so Thank you so much for stopping in. They need right. to hear that from a, from a dual citizen. Thank you, brother. Yeah, glad to be here. Let's get back to this and hear from John, and then I'm going to close out the cast for today. Have a good evening, people, and we'll catch you tonight. Okay, thanks very much. I don't know what time is coming up tonight, but we're going to do this cast tonight. And so, you know, have a, have a wonderful Christmas and, you know, love each other and just do best and realize everybody's a human being. You know what I mean? All right. Okay, Vinny. Power the people.